The connection between one of the nation's largest brewing companies and automobile fuel may not be readily apparent, but the Coors Brewing Company is making the connection by turning a waste stream into a revenue stream. It really was that continual drive of Bill Coors about, you know, it's another waste that could be a resource that's out of place. What could we do with this? Rick Payne, the Coors Brewing Company's co-products manager, is talking about the former CEO and chairman of the board, Bill Coors. And in this case, the resource out of place was the waste from the 16 million barrels of beer produced each year at their Golden, Colorado facility. Coors now is taking this former waste product and using it to make 3 million gallons of fuel-grade ethanol per year. The plant making this conversion is located on the grounds of the largest single-site brewing operation in the world. Payne, who has been employed by the nation's third largest beer brewer for more than 35 years, is excited about the project. This is a fabulous opportunity. You know, it's good for the environment. It's good for the community. It helps us out. The Coors Brewing Company has essentially been brewing ethanol in one form or another since 1873, but it had never continued the fermentation process to 100% ethanol until 1996. For Coors, the journey from beer brewer to ethanol producer was somewhat circuitous. It begins in the early 90s when new provisions in the Clean Air Act mandated a reduction in Denver's smog levels. Those regulations required all gasoline sold in the area to be blended with some kind of oxygenate. The top contenders were the now banned methyl tertiary butyl ether, or MTBE, and ethanol. At the time, petroleum processors were looking for ready sources of ethanol. Finding some way of utilizing the leftovers from Coors was briefly considered. After some investigation by American Company, an Aurora, Colorado-based technical professional services and engineering firm, the petroleum refiners determined it would be difficult to make a profit and dropped the idea. Merrick saw an opportunity and approached Coors. In order to make it really work and be economic, we had to do it here at the brewery. Well, the petroleum company at the time wasn't about to operate a refinery unit, which this is, in the brewery, and Coors was not about to get into the fuel business. So as sort of an enabler, we stepped up as the engineers and built a plant known and operated. When Merrick came on the scene, Coors was already recovering and drying the brewer's yeast for sale to Purina as a pet food additive. In 1996, Merrick attached the first distillation tower to the yeast recovery facility and opened for business. In 2005, after nine years of operation, Merrick doubled the size of the plant by adding another distillation unit. So far, Merrick has invested $6 million in the operation. Well, this is certainly something that we can all be proud about because it's, it's recycling, you know, it's, uh, it has economic benefit, it has an environmental benefit, it's cost savings, improves efficiencies. Uh, it's something to be proud of, yes. And of course, it makes money. Merrick owns the infrastructure, leases the land from Coors, and handles all permitting. In exchange, Coors provides all the spent brewer's yeast, waste beer from the production line, expired keg beer returned to the plant, and seasonal overproduction for processing into ethanol at no charge to Merrick. Anything left over is sent to the company's wastewater treatment plant. Each gallon of the new brew costs only 60 cents and the revenue from sales is split between both companies. Only seven of the more than 3,000 people employed at the Golden Brewing Facility are needed to handle day-to-day -day production. Merrick does not have a full-time employee at the plant, but is responsible for maintenance and repairs. According to Merrick's calculations, the plant annually reduces Coors release of volatile organic compounds by 70 tons and puts 20 million gallons of clean water back into Colorado's water supply. The finished product is sold to Valero Energy Corporation, an independent petroleum refiner that blends the ethanol and distributes it to Diamond Shamrock stations on the Colorado Front Range. 
The reason I trade at Diamond Shamrock is because I know that some of my product and my work and my folks' work is in that gas tank. And Coors has plans to further process the brewer's grains when it determines the move would be profitable. Until market forces and partnerships allow, the barley malt, hops, and other grains are being sold as cattle feed. For the time being, Payne is content to continue living up to Bill Coors adage of waste being a resource out of place, and with apologies to Pete Coors, the current CEO. It's a great time to be here. And if we can move forward with what we're doing with the ethanol and the potential of biomass, we can really reinvent and, and we might be an ethanol plant that just happens to make beer. And don't tell Pete that, he might not have cared. <laughs> For Market to Market, I'm David Miller.